Hello and welcome back to the channel. So we're jumping right back into the engine build for my excavator here. In the last video, I got most of the lower end done, and in this one, we're hopefully gonna finish it off. There are a couple revisions that need to happen after the last video. The first one, and I know a lot of you caught this, I installed the wrong rear main seal, the wrong part number. So I'll fix that later, don't worry about that. The second issue, and this didn't kind of come up till later when I started thinking about it, I had picked two O-rings at random to seal the oil cooler, and the more I thought about it, the more I was kind of worried about it. I've had so many problems with the gasket rebuild kit I got for the engine, and I just, I was extremely paranoid about it. So I went and I bought a rebuild kit, and I was just planning on doing it off camera, and I'm really glad I did, because once I took it apart, the O-rings fit much better, and there was a gasket for that flange as well. Uh, it looked much, much more uh, like it would actually work. Um, but then I ran into a problem, so let's just jump right into that. So the way this works is there's a uh, bolt that goes through here and tightens into here. I was tightening these things up and they were not like cinching down all the way, it just they were just kept turning. Basically what's happening is the threads in here are getting stripped out, kind of stripped out there. That was not bad. Fortunately I caught it. I did catch it before it became a really bad. I mean, there's three or four. Is th these are coarse threaded. There's three or four threads here, so it's not a lot to grab onto, and that's the problem. So a few options here. You could do a helicoil to repair the threads, but the problem here is it's it's basically a blind hole. It's a very shallow hole here. Uh, so you'd have to get like a flat bottom tap. The helicoil taps are like their own size and it's just not going to work. You're going to get like one or two threads in there. I could buy a new one of these. I think I could get one for 150 bucks, like a cheap Chinese one. The OEM one is $900. So I think we've gotten enough cheap Chinese garbage in this video. So I'm going to try to fix this. These are uh, 12 nines, so they should be up to the task. Hopefully this works, otherwise we're going to have to get the uh, welder out and do some hillbilly stuff. Okay, it's been a uh, full full 24 hours. All right. Let's see if we can torque it down without it spinning. I got some JIS style flange nuts here, which we'll need. There we go. Good. I think we're good. The original fasteners had this copper sealing ring on there. And I think that's because you could have coolant like leaking past that gasket and coming up through here. So I'll hold on to that. But really what I need to do is seal these threads since we're gonna have a nut on it now. I'll use uh, some Permatex 2 to seal these. It's gonna be messy, that's okay. Thank you. 
was that? So the benefit of running this on the engine stand, obviously, is if this fails, which let's be honest, it probably will. Uh, it's not too much trouble to fix it. It's more about the money. If I had to choose between spending a few hundred bucks to replace it or some extra time just to see if I can fix it, I'll, I'll pick the second option there. The machinist did uh, clean this off, but there's still a lot of stains on here. So, get rid of that. I think I remember pulling these off. I'm gonna do one last clean out of these cylinder walls just in case anything's blown in here. It's, this is a very dirty environment in here, so stuff just, anything that's oily ends up attracting dirt. Yeah, there's, front top. Yep. Uh, and ground there. All right guys, just bear with me for one minute here. So I said in a previous video that I was gonna reuse the head bolts. And the reason for that is someone told me that you could reuse them one time without it being a problem. It turns out I don't actually believe that because I looked at the manual very closely and it's, it's actually kind of hard to, well, it's a little bit ambiguous, I'll say. So it says for a steel asbestos sandwich gasket, it says new and reuse, like there's different torque specs for each. But then for a laminated steel sheet gasket, it just has uh, torque plus angle. It doesn't mention anything about reusing anything. I looked at the original gasket. It's right here, and this is just a normal steel laminated one. So according to my interpretation, it seems to me like the head bolts cannot be reused. All right, the manual says to coat the threads and ceiling surface with molly. It also says if you're using the asbestos gasket, you're supposed to use engine oil to lubricate these threads instead of molly. Probably plug these up before I forget. Oh. Oh. I thought these were the uh, glow plugs. These are the glow plug holes over here. Whoops. <laughs> <sighs> right, these are 12 pointers. Okay, the pattern they want you to use, well, this is the front, so basically they want you to start outside and spir spiral your way inward, which is a little bit opposite from how I've normally seen it done on other engines, but that's okay. And we're gonna start at 50.6, then go to 65.1, and then we'll do 90 degrees over. All right, now we're going up to 65.1. 
So the angle is 90 degrees plus 30 minus zero tolerance. So you gotta be right at 90 or over. These are 12 point fasteners. So we need to move three divots over. Okay, well, hopefully these don't snap off. There's 45. So I think I got that one too far. It's still within the plus 30, but Move. All right, I think we got it. Yeah, I've just washed this thing. I'm just re-oiling it. This is the uh, recommended order to do this. It's really turning in there. That's making me nervous. Come back to that one. Something's wrong with that. Yeah, look, it was, uh, so 7.8 there, 7.7, .7, but as you go down to 7.4. So I think this bolt was about to snap off in there. And these injectors have been rebuilt. And I did mark them where I came off. It doesn't really matter at this point, but might as well put them back where they came from. Actually, I just realized I forgot these things. That seal. Probably important. Oh. There we go. Okay, well I ended up pulling this stud and this stud as well. They felt kind of weird to me when I was torquing them down and sure enough, they were stretching out. So I got some new studs here. I really think I'm to blame for this. Um, I, I should have kind of torqued them down slowly instead of just going all the way in. That's probably what did it. At least I caught it before it broke in the head. That would have been a little bit worse. I had to cut these studs down to size so they're a little bit wonky with the threads on top.
now I'm all paranoid. Okay, so obviously I'm missing a seal right here between the injector and the, the head. It goes right there, I remember it now. Fortunately, my gasket kit came with some, but unfortunately they're the completely the wrong size. So I'll have to order some of those. This, uh, this gasket kit, man, what a disaster. Like hardly anything's fit on it. I really regret buying it. Let's check out these glow plugs real quick. Four and a half ohms, 4.3. They're all the same though. Okay, what is that? V squared over R, right? So 24 times 24 divided by 4.4, 4, 130 watts each. That seems, is that, that seems a little high, but maybe that's right. Fortunately, this spec is while well, it's cold. Makes it a lot easier. These new lifters are a little bit taller. So these adjustment screws are a little bit higher than they were before. And I'm gonna have to readjust too once the engine's kind of broken in, so. All right, well, hopefully this fits at least. Not uh, gonna tighten this down yet, obviously, since I wanna make sure it's getting the uh, oil to it. But I'll just get these on. I just, I just don't, whoop. I'm just trying to avoid uh, dirt getting in the engine here. So I'm just covering it up. I think I lost one of the plugs that went in here, so I had to buy another one. These are a 1 8 BSPT. All right, so motor mount, I think that's alternator mount. And then the oil, oh, oh no. All right, so down there is the oil pump shaft, input shaft. And uh, it's basically, it sticks out like that, it's blind. And then there's a coupler that goes on it. And then this, is you know what drives it off the camshaft gear right there. So I've made the dumb mistake of not putting the coupler on. I thought it slid in there, but nope. There's uh, it's it's no, it needs to go underneath this. So uh, what do I have to do? I guess I have to get the pan off again, the pump off, and then I gotta work this in. I'm gonna cover these up first, actually, just to keep any extra dust out of the system. Okay, got the uh, paper gasket dressed up there. I think this is the right bolt. This one's aluminum. I think this one goes up front.
Yep, still there. Love doing things over again. So I already got this thing rolled up. That's all I was missing. Stay caught up before things got even more out of hand. Okay, depending on how you see this, it's either more bad luck or a blessing in disguise. So I had recalibrated my Harbor Freight torque wrench. It was 10% low. So I did, I fixed that and then I came through and retorqued the mains, snugged those up to the right spec. And then I just happened to check the spec for the rod bolts and I realized I had did that completely wrong. I had just put uh, a little bit of oil on the threads, but you're actually supposed to use grease. And more importantly, you're supposed to grease the surface that the fastener clamps onto. Also, since this is a torque plus angle, I had read, misread the spec. It said 60 plus 30 and minus zero degrees, so you can't go under 60. And I had read that 60 plus or minus 30 for some reason. I had to actually go back and watch the original video just to hear me say that. And then I checked the, the markings and they were wrong. So I'm gonna have to retorque these. These are torqued to yield and they've already been torqued. So I had to get some more bolts. Uh, it's kind of stinks, but um, I'll just I'll pay the stupid tax now instead of having to pay it later with interest. This may have been fine as was, but uh, at least it's some peace of mind, right? Okay, each notch should be uh, 30 degrees, right? Since this is 12 point, 30, 60, about there. Actually, that's wrong. That's 90. I want 60, okay, 30, 60. Let me get the other one going. past there we go all right just do that uh, three more times let's look at this while I'm here New O-ring on there. I think this is like the float. I think this goes like this. These sensors are not cheap. <laughs> I'm probably gonna end up putting a magnet on here. But uh, I'll just tighten this in case I forget before I put oil in it. It's getting heavy. Right. Just making sure this is the right water pump.
I've been burned on thermostats a few times now, so I always test them. This one, 82C. All right, so it's at like 80, 87 in here, and it is, it is cracked open. It just was really slow to respond there. So it is cracked open at the right temperature. I think a lot of these aren't used. Look back at some old pictures. Just checking some old footage. Looks like the alternator bracket goes right here. Should work. Okay, you may have seen a video I posted on Instagram about this, but um, I wanted to replace the front damper pulley because, well, first off, the rubber is, is shot on it. It's dry rotted, um, it's falling apart. Uh, but second, also, the, the front ceiling service is, is kind of worn out. This you could repair. Uh, so I got this one. It, it looks, you know, okay. Something did kind of feel off a little bit when I was holding it. So if you're not familiar with what the purpose of this is, it's not... Was that a mosquito? This isn't for uh, balancing out the rotating assembly. It's for dampening any vibrations caused from the combustion process. So you have this outer steel ring, and then there's an inner the inner hub here, and they're joined together through this rubber. And over time, like this one is 30 years old, the rubber gets bad and then they can fail. If you've ever had one fail on you, you'll know it's uh, not a good thing to happen. So anyway, if there's a vibration here, this mass on the outside, which is you know coupled just with rubber, will uh, dampen it. So you put it on, there's no, it eats any vibrations up pretty good. So this one it did not feel right to me. It didn't have like the balancing here. So like, you know, that's a little bit concerning. But then eventually I was playing around with it and I found it's ringing like a bell, which is not what this, this should not be doing that. So eventually I ended up finding out they just had glued an O-ring in here to make it look like this was a two piece unit here, but it's just O-rings. So this, this, uh, this could be bad if you put this on your engine. But I think if you have an engine that's at the same RPM just running, uh, it, this is actually pretty important. It can, over time, it can fatigue your crankshaft out. So uh, this could have been a disaster. Thankfully I caught it. Now I, I mean, I already knew better, so eventually I'll learn my lesson. Anyway, I did a little more research and I found a shop that rebuilds these. It's in California. So I, I called him and he said, like the turn time is two days. Actually, I'm tempted to just, <laughs> it'd be a good joke just to mail this one to him and ask him to rebuild it, see what he says. But uh, no, I'll send this one. By the way, guys, this, this uh, balancer was from Friday Parts. If you're not familiar with them, they, are, they have a huge amount of uh, marketing spending going on the last few years. And they go after pretty much every YouTuber for sponsorship. Even uh, small fish like me, they're, they're going after. So, um, you know, you see a lot of advertisements for them, but you know, buyer beware, right? Okay, got the uh, genuine Isuzu O-rings for this. Yeah, those fit way better. Probably should have spent more time up front, kind of just looking everything over on this kit before starting, because then I could have ordered everything at the same time from the same supplier. But uh, live and learn.
the oil cooler thing really slowed me down because I took it apart and it was broken. I was stressed out about it for a long time. But I think, I think we got that dialed in. So it should be a little bit more smooth sailing from now on. This video got really delayed because of that. But it's just the way it is sometimes. Oh, is this gasket upside down? Whoops. Idiot. That looks better. It's kind of late at night here. Doesn't sound good. Oh, this, there's a crack in here. No wonder. As soon as I started tightening it up, I could hear it kind of, the noise of crackness. And you can, can you see it? So I don't think I did that. I didn't hear any popping. As soon as I started putting tightening on it, it uh, was, I heard the kind of tearing sound. So I don't know, maybe I can repair it. I guess I'll have to see how much a new one costs. That's a bummer. It's way too much. Well, hopefully this uh, manifold doesn't crack. <laughs> oh wait, gasket. All right, this says top. Well, that doesn't look right. There we go, that's good. By the way, the coating on here, uh, I did the exact same thing I did for the turbo and on the cat manifold. I sandblast it in the cabinet and then I spray it with slip plate. It's a, uh, I don't have it around here, but it's basically like a graphite powder that bonds to whatever you spray it on. It works really well on manifolds. That fit? Nope. That would be too easy. All right, let's see what else we need. The gasket kit didn't come with a gasket for that either. I mean, why would it? There's this pipe. No gasket for this either. Uh oh, I'm just trying to figure out which, uh, what kind of gaskets I need to order here. It'd be nice to finish this sometime this year. By the way, a subscriber made this for me. Yeah, a guy named uh, Joe made this for me, and this thing is so, makes this whole sprayer so much better. Like the stream is superior to an actual can of brake cleans, way better than the one that came with it. He sent a sticker with it. I think it's for his channel or something. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, this sprayer is is his. So I'll just put it put it right here to remind me. Because man, this thing is this thing is, makes this so much better. Right, my uh, ceiling kit did not come with new O-rings, obviously. It's fine. Don't need that. <coughs> Should probably put some oil on those. That'd be a good idea. There we go. All right.
Coyotes are out. The threads on this are kind of messed up. Also, by the way, a huge thank you to Sam. He sent me some of these tap wrenches. They make life way easier. I didn't even know what they were at first. I had to ask, ask them. But uh, once I figured it out, I think I need some longer bolts. Okay. Ooh, we got a problem here. That doesn't look right. It's a little bit out of alignment. This, uh, I mean, this obviously has been through some issues. It's been all welded up. I don't know how, I'll have to look at pictures how it originally went on here. Either way, it's not good. You'd have to bend it either way. It's not good for it. Got another issue here. Scraping right here, which isn't, that's not that big of a deal. I'll just grind this down. This water pump is a little bit weird. So here's the old one. This fitting is a bit bigger than this one. So I'm gonna have to make a custom hose to go from here to here. This is two different, way two different sizes. This one, yeah, that was the same size before. Doesn't drag here, not even close actually. No big deal. I think it pointed that way, if I recall. I think these went in here somewhere. I'll just leave these here for now. I don't need to tighten those up yet. All right, got some exhaust gasket maker here. This is a Felpro Felramic. It works well, it's just hard to work with because it's metal. not pretty but uh, it'll work <gasps> I didn't want to use I, you probably could have used Permatex copper I didn't want to use it though I, I was a little bit of afraid of it like coming apart and getting into the turbo which is why I went with this and I made this gasket up I should probably put some sealant on here okay. I did make a gasket for this pipe too, just as ugly, but uh, I'll wait for that. There's this guy. Oh. 
is right there. Okay, I think the last thing on this side is this. So right here, this drops in and this is engages the oil pump and this is on the cam gear. So that's what drives the oil pump. I'm gonna leave this out for now and I'm just gonna put the cover on. Of course, the gasket kit didn't come with a new O-ring, but I had happened to have this size here. I did get a new cam gear. This is the old one. So my idea here is if I just cut this old gear off and then you know hook a drill extension on here, I can prime the oiling system just by you know running it through there. So that's why I'm leaving this out for now. We'll give it a shot. Maybe in this, probably in the next video, I'm thinking, because things are going really slow right now. Well, this video is, seems probably seems like it's jumping all over the place. And that's because it is, because I basically run into one issue and that, then I go work on something else until I go to the hardware store and get the parts I need. I guess that's the way it goes. Now this isn't going to be as strong as just using a fastener, but it's a lot more convenient, so hopefully it'll work. Give it a shot. Oops. Actually, one of the hardest challenges was finding a shop that would fix that intake manifold for me. I went to about three or four different ones. They all said, we don't, we don't repair cast aluminum. So I was like, okay. But finally I found one that could do it. So we'll be putting that on here in a second. That's perfect. All right, well that looks pretty good. Once that all tightens up, check the alignment with the other water pump pulley. Oh, that looks really good. I mean, the, the camera's probably not perfectly lined up, but that's, uh, that's a nice straight shot there. Let's get a belt on here to see. Yeah, that's, uh, that's better than what was there. What do you suppose the chances are that this alternator still works? Actually, off camera, I had tried turning it and it was completely locked up, but I kind of cranked on it for a while and it started turning again, so maybe it'll be okay, but probably not. All right, we'll just let that here for now. Okay, speaking of pulleys, I got the damper back. It's been rebuilt. This was the damper doctor, the doc did it. Um, so he, the, what they do is they bake it uh, to get the old rubber out and then they inject some kind of special silicone into here. So that's all done. I still need to fix this ceiling surface. So I actually have a speedy sleeve on order for it. Uh, so when that comes here, I'll just, uh, that'll be in the next video. I just need to strip the paint off here and uh, install it, and then we should be good to go on that. So like I said, I finally did find a shop that would do this for me. And uh, let me show you. Here is the uh, patch manifold. Apparently it's very hard to weld cast aluminum, at least that's what all the shops that turned me down said. But fortunately I found this guy, it's just a one-man shop. But I think he did heat well to the inside there too. So it uh, should be, well, I guess we'll test it out here in a second, but looks pretty decent to me. Now as far as why this broke, uh, I was really racking my brain about it. Um, you know, I, I didn't do anything crazy. I mean, the worst thing that happened is I had the, I put the gasket on upside down, but I didn't even really torque it when I was doing that. So. I was wondering if maybe one of these runners was out of alignment. So maybe I'll torque this one on last. But um, it did also occur to me that a tree had fallen on this engine. Uh, that's what had smashed the radiator and the hydraulic cooler. So, I mean, I guess that's also possible is that a, a tree had just hit this and, and cracked it. Yeah, 
I'm just gonna snug this on slowly. I could not find a replacement one of these, by the way. So, I mean, it didn't look super hard, but. Go nice and easy on this. Super paranoid about it. All right, here we go. Nice. Oh. What a relief. All right, is it cracked? Looking good, at least from here. All right, we'll call that a success. I don't think it uh, took him a lot of time. He only charged me the minimum job rate. Um, I did ask for some pictures, so if we send him over, by the time I edit this video, I'll throw him up here of, of his process. Oh, look at that. That gasket actually fits. And... Okay, everything, just gonna make sure everything lines up here. I need to get a new hose for that end. All right, well, it would be time to put the injector plumbing back on, but um, truth be told, while I was filming the rest of this video, I found a really good deal on a new oil cooler. So I am going to replace it, and which means I'm gonna have to pull the injection pump back off. So I'm not gonna put any plumbing on in this video. I know this is a little bit crazy since I spent some time fixing this, but it's like my sixth, maybe even my seventh sense is telling me that this cooler is going to be a problem. So I'm really happy I found a, a new one. I'm going to swap it off camera and then when we pick up on the next video, it'll just be finishing this off and then everything else on the engine. And really this is all that's left. There's uh, just some piping and some random brackets. I never got to the rear main on this one, but We'll get to that on the next one. Basically, here's the one that came with the kit and, you know, big surprise, it didn't fit. This is the correct one that needs to go on. And then this is like the half. Well, we'll get into it in the next video. Nothing left on this table except for stuff I'm not reusing, like fasteners, um, you know, old bolts, all that kind of stuff. So we are almost done. That's going to be it for the engine work in this video. Uh, I got some footage of calibrating my torque wrenches, so I'll put that up. After this, it's probably gonna be really boring to skip that. And uh, next video, I think we're gonna have this thing running. I, I got a pretty good feeling at this point. We're, there's not much left to do. Very fancy Pittsburgh torque wrenches here. It has been a while since I've cowled them, so let's go ahead and do that. This one's very easy to do. I'll show you why here. Just so you know, thanks to the magic of editing, I haven't actually done anything on this video yet, even though you're seeing this at the end. The thing that makes it convenient is if you set it to 100 foot-pounds and then you measure from the center over here 24 inches, it's like perfectly right on this joint. So you just need a 50-pound weight right here. So you, you have two feet, 50 pounds, that's 100 foot-pounds if you push right here to, to click it. So you got a 40-pound and two fives. I think you do want this as straight as possible. So if I go a little bit in. No, okay. It needs to be adjusted. Oh yeah, it's actually way off. Right there. <clears throat> I 
right there. Okay, so that's right at about 21 and a half. So we'll do uh, 50 times 21.5 divided by 12. So it's, it's breaking at about 90 foot pounds right now. So we need to tighten it up a little bit. Going the right way. I think I'm going the wrong way. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to go back to here. Okay, so that's not breaking. Close though. Yeah, I think that's good. Let's see. If we move it a little bit out, it should. Right goes, yeah, it goes there. Doesn't go there. And uh. Yeah, I think that's good right there. I guess if you were smart, you would kind of check it at a couple other spots on the range just to make sure it's not like deviating too much, but that's probably good enough for me. Okay, now for the, uh, what brand is this? Husky. So this is basically Harbor Freight quality, sold at Lowe's. So this one, the adjustment's back here. There is, looks like a, there's a lock nut on it, but it's not actually tight. Or at least maybe I left it untight before. So just like the other one, this is set to 50 foot pounds. And when you measure, like 12 is like right on this bar. It's almost perfect. So I can use the same weight. Really slow. It's not bad. I tightened it too much. Am I going the wrong way? Yep. Right here should not. Oh. Had to replace the zip tie there. Okay, so it doesn't break there. Breaks right there, that's perfect. So this one wasn't actually far off from what's, where it was supposed to be. The Harbor Freight one was off by 10%. All right, well, I don't think Charlie's been on this video yet. So here she is. And I just want to show you, it's about 7.30 right now and it's still light outside. I'm filming this with just purely natural light. So uh, it's, it's about springtime. Charlie, what are you doing? Anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching. In the next video, I'm hoping, I think we should have this engine running in the next video. So uh, I guess stay tuned for that. I'll catch you on that one.